Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to the micro series, microservices series. And in the last couple of videos, we are exploring deploying microservice as a Lambda. And we are exploring AWS CDK. So here we are going to explore how we can uh, deploy our Nest.js uh, service as a Lambda. And then how we can uh, expose all the different HTTP methods or HTTP verbs from that Lambda. So currently this is a typical API gateway. How it works is let's say you are using serverless framework or any other technique. What you will do is you will create API gateway and then you will create all these lambdas separately. Right. So this can be user lambda, a profile lambda, account lambda, and they should be able to handle individual requests. So maybe it is doing HTTP get users. If you need to create something like post request, then you will be creating another Lambda. That is when you are creating individual APIs as a Lambda. Let's say this is HTTP post users, right? This is what earlier we used to do uh, when we were not having some modern modules. The, 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 the latest things which has been introduced in the serverless framework. So this is what we used to do and today also you can do it. So this is the API gateway. I'm logged into my AWS console and here you can create a new API. You can have any swagger file. You can just pass this or let's see if I create a simple API gateway through the example API. Okay. So what it will give you, it will give you all these rest interfaces. Okay. Get. So this integration request right now is attached to the mock, not to the Lambda. That's the important point. Let's see if I'm doing this. So this is integration request is currently mapped to the mock request, but it can be attached to Lambda function also because Lambda can be triggered. So this is what the Lambda, because if you see what is the Lambda, Lambda is nothing of, but a, just a function. And Lambda can be triggered from different points. It can be triggered through the API gateway. It can be triggered through the S3. So let's say this is the S3 bucket. And you actually put some item into this. Then you can add a trigger that whenever somebody adding a new object trigger this Lambda. Or this is the DynamoDB stream. That whenever anybody is writing to the Dynamo table. You trigger this Lambda. So Lambda is just nothing but an event uh, driven system. You can say it can be invoked through different event trigger. So if you just see the Lambda trigger model. What all different uh, events through which Lambda can be triggered? There are many ways. Synchronous and, synchronous and asynchronous. I will just talk about uh, synchronous. Let's say synchronous means you are just hitting a HTTP interface talking to the API gateway, API gateway will trigger your Lambda or asynchronous event. Let's say we have SNS here. I mean, these are all our AWS component, SNS, SQS. Or you can have SQS, simple queuing service, simple messaging, uh, simple queuing service, simple notification service. This is SNS, this is SQS. And whenever any event is published to the SNS topic, a Lambda can be triggered. Whenever you put anything into SQS queue, then Lambda can be act as a handler. So these all are Lambda triggers, which you can use here. We are using a plain and simple API gateway. So whenever you hit send a request to the API gateway, we want to trigger the Lambda. So these are all and stream based also. They like DynamoDB stream, Kinesis stream. Whenever there is a change in the stream, you can trigger a Lambda or SNS, SQS, S3. Whenever you are upload, updating, I mean, putting some object, updating, deleting some object, you can trigger the Lambda or whenever you are putting something in SNS or SQS, you can trigger Lambda. So Lambda is a, is really a big thing for the serverless architecture. And here we are executing the Lambda when you hit a request to the API gateway. So this is what I was talking about. This is the mock API, pet store, right? And these are resources, HTTP resources, HTTP get, HTTP post, HTTP get by ID, right? 
here you are trying to get a pet by id here you are trying to create a pet here you are trying to get all the pets here you, you are trying to get uh i think this get is doing nothing just a return so currently it is integrated with the mock request but you can change it how we can change it i will just go to the integration request currently it is mapped to the mock this is the mock but you can change it to the lambda function then here you need to specify the lambda function which you wanted to connect to right all these things but here what is the the catch here for each and every request you might be pointing to a different different lambda so let's say in this architecture if we have like let's say 20 apis i will be and ended up writing 20 different lambdas right this is pointing to a different lambda this is pointing to a different lambda this is pointing to a different lambda it's not uh, what i want what uh, what the target uh, our target is let's say let's clean this up or maybe i will just copy this thing so what i'm trying to explain here i'll just try to clean some blocks So here my point is that that's fine you can you can trigger a API call through the API gateway but here I don't want to have write 10 different lambdas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to proxy all the requests to this particular lambda. This can be your nest JS CRUD operation. right for the user so all the requests i will be proxying from api gateway to this lambda so that is the advantage of this this is what i wanted to achieve because i don't want to write 10 different lambdas for my api gateway so i will just create a proxy interface so proxy will take the API gateway recall the request to the single lambda and I will be deploying this service as a single lambda. I mean this is possible with the tools and some modules serverless application model which was introduced recently and due to that we can deploy a simple express type script app having 20 different APIs or NestJS microservice having 20 different APIs as a single lambda. So you proxy all the requests to this uh, lambda and this lambda has internal routing it already knows that when the request is coming api v1 user i need to trigger the i need to call this function when the request is coming for api v1 auth there will be a code which it will be executing but for that it's not like a single lambda it's the whole microservice will be bootstrapped every time whenever there is a request coming But we are fine because this is a lambda it's going to sleep after when we are not using so we are going to proxy all the request and this single lambda is playing with all these things this is like a nest js lambda we are going to create and deploy as a single lambda and we are going to create a proxy interface so all the requests will proxy because you are going to hit the api gateway endpoint and it is going to proxy all the requests which are coming after forward slash to this API, this lambda, single lambda, and single lambda has internal routing, which should be able to handle the requests coming for that. So this is what we are going to achieve. Here I was just explaining. Okay, this is simple API gateway, and uh, I think it has created the APIs also. I can just deploy that. We can create a stage also. Let's say dev and prod. deployment because currently it's just a mock interface this is mock interface i can deploy this api and new stage let's say dev i will deploy and i will delete this resource i don't want to be charged by aws so when you copy this what it will give you welcome to pet store your api is deployed 
on AWS environment, right? And it is giving you, I think, all these endpoints. What are the endpoints? If you see this, there is a pets is the endpoint. Right? It, it is giving you this JSON. So my API gateway is live with the mock API integration, right? So the same thing we are going to do here, it will be just having one proxy request that will directly go to the Lambda and Lambda will take care of. We don't need, we are not going to see all these things because we are going to have a single proxy interface that will talk to a single integration Lambda. Okay, I need to delete this resource. That's it. So let's take a look on to first on AWS CDK remaining part because this is what we want to achieve. But to achieve this, first we need to understand more on AWS CDK. So we are going to take a look on more examples. Let's say with the DynamoDB, API Gateway and Lambda function. Then we will come, come here and we will try to deploy our Nest.js simple microservice as a Lambda. And welcome back. In this video, let's take a look on uh, other constructs also like uh, having DynamoDB, Lambda, S3 buckets and all, all together. Okay, so you can create a simple DynamoDB construct, sim something like this. Just a simple DynamoDB.table and the table name, let's say we are using uh, users table, users and you can also specify the stage in which you are creating it and table name is simply api users and then it's a dynamo db table so you have to specify what is your partition key what is your sort key and all those options you can specify in this uh, let's say the sort key is created at Sorry, sort key the name is created at which is of type number dynamodb dot attribute type dot number. Okay, so this is just like a simple table definitions you have created. It's like a dynamodb. Similarly, you can also create a simple S3 bucket. How we do it? Const user uploads or user artifacts whatever new cdk dot there are many ways to do it so you can just do aws s3 dot bucket or you can import it like this uh, import same as the dynamo db s3 and here it will be aws it's not uh, completing it's a cdk dot aws s3 is it something we have here it's still thinking typescript is a little slow here so s3 bucket and here what we can do is we can just pass this bucket name let's say user docs and stage this is the environment and then whatever the properties you want to pass for the bucket name is let's say the bucket name bucket name is simply what bucket name you wanted to put user docs and then stage and then uh, retention policy removal policy is cdk dot uh, destroy removal policy dot retain like if you are just uh, doing a cdk destroy then do you want to retain it or you just wanted to destroy it? like get rid of these resources so here we are creating this s3 bucket user upload s3 bucket and here is you can say user dynamo table okay so we have these two resources created now how can i let's create a simple lambda function and then we will give permission to this lambda function to read and write to the dynamo uh, or to read and write to the s3 bucket so const here 
API lambda function and here also we will use uh, cdk dot lambda cdk dot aws lambda so you can access the resources like this also from cdk dot function and here you need to specify the whole uh, different properties this your function name okay api user stage this is my function name and rest all the properties which we, we can which we can specify and in the properties it's all about uh, function name there are many properties runtime runtime will be uh what is cdk dot aws lambda again we need to just look for the whole path aws lambda dot runtime dot node 16 memory size 1024 description what are the other properties memory size log retention is like how long you wanted to retain the log for this so we will use this everywhere cdk dot lambda dot here is retention days do we have something properties like this cdk dot aws it should be aws logs dot retention days and you can specify okay how many days five days okay so you just need to take the help from typescript to play around with all these things and these are the environments we have and we need to specify the handler handler name is let's say api lambda handler this is your function name and then the code cdk dot aws lambda dot dot code dot assets from from assets and here you need to specify the path i will just specify path dot join from correct dir name uh, just go one step back and then there is a maybe a source directory from there you can get the index.js i think we already have something index.js we are not writing typescript because it requires bundling and a lot of other things so this is simple code environment is you can pass the bucket name dynamo tables and all current directory name i think we don't need this thing we will see so this is api user what we will do is now we have created this lambda function so api lambda function dot grant grant right okay or let's say this is the s3 bucket we have I didn't care. User dynamo table dot grant read axis read write data to the API lambda function. And similarly, we have user upload S3 bucket dot grant public axis or read write to the API lambda function. This is how you will specify the you will give permission to this lambda functions to read and write. And other than that, you can also add a policies, initial policies. So here we can just specify initial policy and this policy, these are the policy statements you can add. This will be an array. Here you can add a resources like new CDK dot AWS IAM. These are the IAM policies you are going to add to this Lambda, like adding a policy, policy statements. And what policy statement contains okay what effect there are three instructions right effect actions and resources so cdk dot aws im dot effects allow 
okay we are doing allow for this particular actions and actions on s3 and uh, the other thing is resources i mean either you can specify the ern of s3 bucket because here because on this s3 bucket i'm just writing a policy that you can do all the actions so here you can specify you have to specify the bucket ern okay so this is like uh, you have added a policy statement with this lambda this lambda can do the read write and all the operations on this s3 bucket why it is complaining bucket ern okay it should be an array and similarly you can attach a multiple policies here let's say i'm talking about sns you can send this lambda functions can send message to all the sns queues which are there in this account so if we, we don't know the topic we don't know the ern then we can just specify wildcard that means it can send to all the sns resources and then dynamo db and we already have a dynamo table resource user dynamo table dot ern let's say dynamo table dot table ern so uh, we will see if this works i mean we need to specify the table ern for this and uh, i think yeah we will see but because we also need to specify the index all the access to the table resources so this is how we can initialize the policies like uh, this lambda can do this do that and then explicit permissions also added here to read and write to the s3 bucket and read and write to the dynamo table and then you can also console output all the the resources you are creating using cloud formation output so new cdk dot cnf uh, output cloud function output okay so what we are saying is this and i'm just calling it as a what is my api lambda handler api lambda function this is my resource and i wanted to just could set these output export variable names for the stack so if i can when i want to refer i can refer it from here api lambda function ern and the value is the ern of the lambda function api lambda function dot function ern so these are the export variables added to this particular stack similarly we have a couple of more for the dynamo for the s3 bucket so this is user dynamo table i mean these should be appropriate names i'm just putting some random names for now this should be table ern and then there is an s3 bucket dot it should be bucket erin so these export names will be added and we can also see that in the console that these are the resources has been created with these arns so let's play with this on to this source we have index.js already and that has a handler index.handler so we may need to change our stuff in the lambda so handler is index dot handler okay so that should be good and in the environment you can populate okay s3 bucket name t uh, dynamo db table and all whatever the environment variable you wanted to specify let's say i'm just specifying stage and then i will just uh, deploy this using cdk deploy now let's deploy this particular stack which contains s3 bucket dynamo db table and the simple lambda function 
so we will just do npm run cdk deploy and we will see what all resources are getting created for this stack api lambda stack okay creating the assets and now if you see what all permission it is asking for it is creating this particular role and it is creating all these are the policies okay resource effect actions and principle and then all the resources like it is we are giving permissions for the s3 uh, dynamo db table and sns and it is creating these resources and we can also see what all resources are getting created in the the cloud formation So it is creating cloud formation chain set and going to create all these resources for us i mean there may be a failure also if the resource already exists and you are trying to create it again or you are creating some stack name which already exists or resource already exists in that case you may see a problem you can see a dynamo db table with identifier already exist so it's it will roll back it will not create anything can i add a policy here removal policies cdk dot removal policy dot destroy and here also i will just say destroy so when i just do npm run cdk destroy it should clean up both the resources like s3 bucket and the dynamo db table i mean ideally we should not destroy them because let's say somehow if you de destroy a stack your persistent like s3 bucket rds dynamo db table table should also get destroyed so we should avoid it here i'm just creating a demo and i'm just showing because when I do this again, I'm getting this error because maybe a partially this stack was deployed and the, those resources were created and the stack was not completed. Now when I'm trying to create the stack, it is saying duplicate. So first let's clean up this stack by removing this S3 bucket and removing the table. Now I will just do is CDK deploy again. So it should create the resources again so we are just doing simple plug and play with the aws cdk and seeing how these resources are created destroyed what is the retention policy so ideally now this should work we should be able to see all the stack created with all these three constructs which is dynamo db table s3 bucket and a simple lambda function So it is creating cloud formation chain set. Now, what is this? API docs development already exist. Because this S3 bucket already exists and we cannot create it again. So what I will do is I will just change this name. Ideally it should clean up the resources. Once we create these resources, we will do CDK destroy command to see if both these resources gets destroyed or not you can see here i just now change the resource names so what it will do it will automatically replace those resources with this so that's also another way to clean up the resources if you change the name then the old resources because now the stack stake definition has been changed now we you are using a different s3 bucket with a different name so the old s3 bucket because the removal policies destroy will be destroyed and similarly for the DynamoDB table.
so it is creating this dynamo db table s3 bucket and the, the roles and creating this lambda stack and it will take some time because it is creating cloud formation template and just then deploying the cloud formation templates to the aws so here you can see the outputs so you can see there is a s3 bucket there is a dynamo s3 bucket dynamo table and the lambda function and we can go to dynamo db lambda and s3 bucket to see all these things so i can see one table there i can see s3 bucket and this is my lambda function okay you can see the sort key and the partition key user id and the created at and this is my lambda function i'm still using simple javascript because for typescript i need to do the bundle and all these things will happen this is my s3 bucket now what i will do is i will try to clean up the resources let's say if this removal policy really works destroy so what it should do is it should clean up the resources means the dynamo db table lambda and this s3 bucket should be gone once we destroy this stack so you can also see the progress in the cloud formation like uh, whatever is we are doing through the cdk should be reflecting the same here so delete is in the progress and what all e events you can see it is deleting the resources also so that's good So it's deleting this S3 bucket. Delete complete. Uh, the only thing is the Dynamo table. The delete complete. So now if I just go and S3, check the S3 bucket, I should not see that S3 bucket now. You can see that bucket is gone. User one docs app development. The Dynamo table is also gone. Okay. So that's a clean way of doing things and to avoid any duplicates because earlier we were facing some errors because the S3 bucket was already there. Maybe I did a control C while creating the resources. So the resource or resources were partially complete. And then when I'm trying to do CDK deploy, the same name resources are already existing because once you create a once you do the CDK deploy, you can do CDK deploy 10 times it won't complain that resource already exists because that is part of the stack and it won't create that resource again until unless you update the resource name or simple stack with s3 bucket with a simple dynamo db table and a simple lambda function now we will see we will introduce api gateway here which is aws api gateway and we will see how it really works so uh, what we are doing is a lambda cannot be triggered directly without api gateway okay so this is our lambda there can be multiple lambda functions okay and for data storage we have a dynamo table this is like we are talking about serverless tech DynamoDB and uh, maybe we also have S3 bucket to store some content some for, from some services. Okay, so how it really works is the request will come from the client that has to go through the API gateway. Now, API gateway is like a simple uh, construct we need to create. This API gateway can do a couple of things. I mean, this is AWS API gateway can do n number of things, but here we are talking about particular use cases. Either you can create a simple proxy so that whatever the request is coming from this API gateway, API v1 user, API v1, anything will go to this Lambda. And we already know that in the current stack, we are current. Uh, what proxy will do is all the requests will directly go to the Lambda 
and then lambda can just do its stuff like writing to s3 bucket reading from s3 bucket or writing to the dynamo db table it's like a simple rest api right these are the simple rest apis we are exposing or what you can do is you can go in the old way we are not creating a proxy here on the rest api gateway what you will do you will create a resources okay the user you will create a resources like user is a resource and then you will create a methods like get put post i will show you how it really works manually and then we can also think about uh, doing it so this is let's say api gateway we'll go to that console api gateway here if you create a api gateway manually okay http apis demo apis so here you can add a methods like for the integration request this is the default name is the stage that's fine create so we are creating api gateway now on this api gateway what you can do is you can create routes resources and all I mean this UI has little change, little bit changed since I saw the last. So here, this is the get request and this is the resource. You can specify here users. So what you are doing is you are adding a get method to the user's resource. So you can see this is the get method. Now what you can do is you can attach a lambda to it. So integration with i think it will be in the inside integration create and attach, attach an integration to this you can choose a lambda function okay now you might already have some lambda function like this lambda is function or currently we don't have any other lambda function and description this ui had changed a little bit recently on the aws api gateway but this is how you are defining the mapping similarly here if you go to the routes this is the get function but you can also create uh, another function like let's say the post on the users so what you are doing is you are not creating a new resource you are just creating a new method similarly let's say i'm just creating a put method on the users so users is actually a resource and these are the methods you are creating so you can actually go manually and attach the integrations okay for put i have another lambda for get i have another lambda for post i have another lambda that's just a way in which we do create api gateways okay i will just delete this one we'll create our api gateway or we just create a proxy because in our case what do we have we have this actually this is actually a user microservice or auth microservice because every service will have its own API gateway and the Lambda. So we just need to create a proxy. So whatever the request is coming, this API gateway will proxy to the Lambda because Lambda cannot expose itself to the outside world. You need to attach an API gateway and the API gateway we are going to have is just going to proxy because this Lambda is not just a simple one single file. It's a whole Nest.js microservice which already has all the APIs in it. It's like a simple living HTTP server, which has already all the APIs get put, post and all the resources. So the API gateway will just do the proxy and this Lambda will handle how to deal with the, all the requests coming for different resources and different methods. That's just a one way. Another way is you define all the, the, all the methods and all the resources at the API gateway and link individual small, small Lambdas which are not coming with API gateway each and everyone. Let's say this is for HTTP get, this is for HTTP put, this is for HTTP post. So here we will, we will be doing the request mapping with the different methods. That is just another way. So how we can, how we can achieve all those things. If you want to just create a simple proxy, what you will do is I will just create a gateway. const api gateway equal to and now here we will be just using the cdk construct cdk dot aws 
गेट वे डब्ल्यू एस ई पी आई गेट वे डॉट लेमडा इंटीग्रेशन एंड हियर यूल पास द स्कोप एंड योर ई पी आई गेट वे नीम द ई पी आई गेट वे नीम कैन बी सिंपल एज यूजर ई पी आई गेट वे एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो पास द स्टेज and then the next argument is because here this is the proxy api gateway so we have to pass all the arguments like what is the handler what happened lambda rs tpi it should be lambda rs tpi Okay, now we can pass all the arguments. Handler, handler is your lambda function which you created here. API lambda function and uh, deploy true. All the required arguments. Proxy. This is important because we are doing proxying, and then. uh the the mime types for the api gateway because api gateway is just going to proxy all the requests so what we will say is whatever is coming except all the mime types and another option is a deploy options we also want to pass the stage stage name we already have a stage so this will create just a proxy and then we can just put it in the export names this is user api gateway ern so here we are creating the api gateway we can just print the api gateway bucket here api gateway rest api name API gateway dot REST API name. Okay, and we just do is CDK deploy. I think store stage is already populated. So here we are, we just have created a proxy API gateway that will just take all the request and take it to this lambda now this lambda function is doing nothing but so just a simple if you see the lambda function it is just sending this simple message but it can be a simple nest js service and maybe i have already destroyed this uh, stack so i will be creating everything again so it will be creating all the resources that's little bit time taking now next thing we are going to talk about is how we can do the mapping of individual resources with the different lambdas okay it's not like we create a simple lambda there can be a multiple lambdas and they will be attached to the different different http methods and the resources at the api gateway level so here we can see that we created this api gateway and this is just doing only proxy and you can see the integration this proxy request is going to the lambda function this lambda function so this is what we created in the the last video and it is only talking about how we do the integrations okay there is can be a proxy integration with the api gateway or you create these uh, individual http resources and build a rest apis like uh, you build the resources on the api gateway which we talked about like uh, here you can just create a simple api gateway and then create the resources manually that we have seen in the last video now what we are going to do that we are going to automate it we are going to create a simple rest apis through the code so i'm just going to take some helper example and try to create a simple rest api interface okay so this is our simple stack okay that is using dynamo table simple lambda function 
and this API gateway. Now we are not creating a proxy API gateway. What we are creating is we just want to create a simple REST interface exposed through the API gateway itself, not through the Lambda. So the Lambda is just like a simple functions. So I will try to just change it. Lambda integration. So this will come from the AWS for a CDK dot. It will come from CDK dot AWS Lambda. Or it's come from AWS API. Gateway dot Lambda integration. And here we need to pass the Lambda function, API Lambda function. Let's say this is API users, API get user Lambda function. Okay, and we will just add the integration and this we need to attach it to our resources. So the resources will be here. We are creating a proxy resources items uh, and we can call it as like a user resource and we are getting adding a one method get to this get all integration get all user integration just use some proper name so we will know and there is a method post and there can be another function we can create I will just copy it for now this is pointing to the same function here it is API get user API post user we need to change couple of things api maybe a get user just put some do some changes api post user and also you need to change the lambda function otherwise you get a conflict right api get user lambda api post user lambda so we will just create it as a api post user lambda or better names is create user update user uh, get user so we'll just add some permissions also because we are using dynamo and s3 so we can add uh, permissions to this another lambda also and then we will inspect the whole aws resources whatever we are creating this rest api should be coming from api gateway aws gateway dot rest api so here what is your users api name it's like users apis and i can just put a stage here this is my stage name okay and this is the like resource i'm adding you users so it will be http users get http users post and then there is a, another integration we need to create for the second lambda which is post users integration and here you just need to pass api post user lambda function and then add this lambda integration to the function and now we can also add a cross origin resource sharing policies that we can skip for now because sometimes when you do the integration with the front end you need to send a particular header so you need to allow front end which is running on different uh, endpoint or different port to communicate to the API gateway. So you need to send a cross origin resource sharing headers from this Lambda so that they can talk. Now, uh, this is first Lambda, API first Lambda ERN. This is, we are just exporting them as an output. API post user lambda ERN and function ERN. Okay. Now what we did is we have created this. We are creating this users resource on the API gateway and where we are creating API gateway here. It will create an API gateway for all these resources you are creating here. You can create n number of resources. I mean, I really don't do the in this particular times we just use a lambda function having all the microservices in it but if you want to do the mapping when i say mapping means we are actually creating these resources here okay i'm using users uh, auth 
cart, all these APIs. And then for each and every get put post method, there will be individual lambda pointing to this. So users, this is simply, uh, you can say, simply HTTP get. Get right. So now another API is let's say the create user. It will be HTTP post. Resource name is still forward slash users. This is resource name. And similarly, similarly, there will be another Lambda integration you will do. You will write Lambda. So you can see the same thing we are doing in the code. We created a Lambda. Then we are creating a resource. And that resource, we are, on that resource, we are adding the methods. HTTP methods, get, put, post, delete, patch. And adding those Lambdas to those particular methods. Because when I say HTTP get users, that particular Lambda will hit. When I say HTTP post users, there will be another Lambda which will be submitted. So this is REST API name is user service. Stage. Okay. Now let's try to deploy it. We have REST API. API dot REST API name. I mean, we may see because I didn't destroy this uh, earlier tech. So because we changed a lot of names, the resource names either let because export names may also create a conflict. I will just create. Okay, so everything is same. Stack name is same. Okay, let's see. Do we need S3 bucket? So we, you can say user API is upload. And for Dynamo table, API users users table, let's say Okay, API get these are the two lambda functions, and now what we need to do is simply CDK deploy. So, what CDK deploy will see is we have two lambda functions, and these two lambda functions are simple, pointing to the same in the resource, and then two lambda functions. Those resources exist, and I change the And this is simple lambda function. This is API gateway. This is S3 bucket, Dynamo table, API get function, API post user function. Now let's see this on the console. So here we can see two lambdas, post user, get user. And on the API gateway, I can see this API gateways. So the earlier API gateway might have been deleted because we replaced it. So this is now our API gateway and you can see the, the resources. You can see the resources, get, and this is the integration request is going to the Lambda function. This Lambda function post is also going to the same Lambda function, right? You can see the integration is happening through the Lambda function, right? We have just a simple stage prod. So the API endpoints looks like this. You can see hello from my Lambda function. This is get request. So this is coming from our API gateway response. Right. Okay. We can, we don't have anything else. Like we didn't create any API gateway models. It's just like simple resources we have created. And uh, those resources are just hitting the Lambda and that all happening through the AWS CDK. Apart from that, we also let's check on the Lambda functions and their permissions because we were attaching some policies to the Lambda functions so that we can see configurations. Okay. You can see. CloudWatch logs, it has an access to S3, SNS, and DynamoDB because we attach the policy and you can see the role document. 
we allowed for S3, read and write, anything, all the operations on this particular bucket. And for the SNS, for the DynamoDB, all the operations, right? And rest all are like creating the logs and all. Here you can individually see what you can do on the DynamoDB. These all operations you can perform on this particular table on the S3 bucket. On SNS, I mean, you can access or any SNS topic, you can send it a message. And this is the CloudWatch logs because we added this policy. And you can also monitor and check the logs what is happening with this particular Lambda. So we are sending a request. So when we send a request, it will generate the logs and that the time mean, it will generate the log stream and that we can see okay i'm not printing anything in the logs right now i can just see if the logs are getting generated currently there is no much logs so these are the role groups Okay, so these are the law logs created for the API post and API get. And the retention period period is you can see five days after five days, these logs will be gone. So it's a simple stack we have created uh, through the AWS CDK. Now, the another important part is how we are managing the roles and permissions. Here we are doing a grant so that this Lambda, currently this Lambda is doing nothing. It's just like index.js. But when you write a microservice whole zip file, you should be able to upload using this stack. Like instead of assets, simple file, you can upload a whole zip and there will be a sing simple handler, a single function handler that will be bootstrapping your uh, express service or the Nest.js whole API system. Okay, so this is all about the API gateway. Now we will come to uh, some of other topics of AWS CDK and then we will jump back to the Uber Eats clone app. So let's see some simple examples. Let's say if I do CDK deploy, what will happen is I didn't change anything in the whole stack. So the deployment will be very fast. I didn't change any resource names. I'm not deleting anything. So it will just check. OK, it will just upload uh, this code. Now you might just do some code update and just deploy. It will be ultra fast because it will generate the cloud formation template and it will try to identify what is the chain set. And if there is no particular chain set, then the deployment is fast and it will give you all the resources. But let's say you are creating another Lambda, which is, I'm just naming it to API put users. So it's like a new Lambda we are creating. And I attached this resource to this is API put, I guess. Yes. So I did a permissions and added created an integration. Put user integration and this is pointing to this lambda. So I created a new lambda. And I will be adding that to this resource users put. So now it's really changed, right? So my lambda function is API put user lambda function. And I can just do a deploy. CDK deploy again. Now it can see, okay, there is a new Lambda you have added. So it will try to deploy this because when it will try to find the chain set, it will know, okay, here you can track everything API, Lambda stack, all the resources. You can see everything adding in the cloud formation output, get user, post user. And now we will also see put user. It's like it's updating and creating the new resource. This is updating the existing stack and then creating this new resource. So creating progress means we are creating API put user develop. This is the new Lambda function it is creating. So this is all about the stack. Now let's see a couple of more demo because this, this is a really interesting topic. We are doing everything.